Welcome to another episode of Game Boy Roulette, where we take a look at randomly chosen games from the Game Boy Library. Ballistic! Uh, should I be wearing protective gear for this? Ballistic can refer to a few things. Being wildly angry or upset, the science of motion as it relates to flight, material that can stop objects, or one of the most poorly received movies of all time. Although oddly enough, that movie had a Game Boy Advance game that was shockingly good. But in this case, it refers to one of those wonderful Game Boy games that I have absolutely no clue about. Actually, not even that, because it's a Game Boy Color game. That's something I feel like I should mention. I had a Game Boy Color as a kid, but I honestly mostly used it to play original Game Boy games, and only owned a few dedicated Game Boy Color games. Granted, one of them is an all-time favorite of mine, Metal Gear Solid aka Metal Gear Ghost Babble, but still a big chunk of the Game Boy Color library is totally foreign to me. Oh, right, Ballistic. It was published by our friends at Infogrames, but developed by a company known as Mitchell Corporation. You may not have heard their name, but if you've ever been in an arcade, chances are you've played one of their games, the incredibly fun Buster Brothers. But another arcade game that they made was known as Puzzle Loop, which eventually got ported to home consoles. Some very specific ones. Puzzle Loop became Ballistic, and was released for Game Boy Color, Neo Geo Pocket Color, PlayStation 1, and The Nuon, a system that only had eight games ever released for it. Okay, I cannot even begin to guess what this thing is, but apparently it had a version of Tetris, so it's cool in my book. As far as the cover goes, how do I put this? It has this sort of semi-CGI art style that you saw a lot of in the late 90s. I can't quite find the words for it, but the Game Boy Color release of Marble Madness had the same thing going. Well, whatever this game is, it's time to find out. Don't get too crazy, we're checking out Ballistic. Infogrames and their weird armadillo icon, and Mitchell Corporation. But they're not armadillo. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, this music rules. Ballistic. I don't know what kind of game this is gonna be, but if it's an arcade game. Ranking? Oh. Oh, it's just high scores. Versus game? Oh, it's probably 1v1. Okay, uh, let's find out what ballistic is. How to play. Give in to when the ball reaches the dead end, okay? Match three or more ball. Wait a minute. Oh, panic? Wait a second. Zuma? Is that you? Ah, uh, it's just Zuma. Alright, everyone, false alarm. It's just Zuma. Never mind. Okay, so. It's it's just it's just Zuma. It's that game you see all the time at, like, Buffalo Wild Wings on their mini arcade thing while you're waiting for your subpar wings. The graphics are a little flashy right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that's probably an emulator issue. I will look it up when we check out the Game Boy Color version of the game, though. So Zuma is a puzzle game staple. I wonder which came first, Zuma or Puzzle Loop? Because either way, it's it's fun. And this so far, I mean, I'm pretty early into it. But there's not a whole lot to say about it being Zuma. You know, I was never big into Zuma. I always liked... Oh god, what was it? Puzzle Bobble? Yeah, Puzzle Bobble. Uh-oh. Oh god. Horror music. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. No, no, it's back. <laughs> it, it's jumping back and forth between the normal music and the horror music really quickly. <laughs> hey, we made it to level 10. All right, now we got something going. No, you don't. Oh, baby, I just cleared everything. Oh, no. Oh, they've added in squares. Oh, this is getting intense. Okay, if I can get a star, there it is. Check it out. Combo, bam, bam. There is something very viscerally satisfying about Zuma. Really, there's something viscerally satisfying about most of these sort of... God, what do you even call games like this? A shoot bubbles at other things game? Reminds me a lot of a game I used to play all the time as a kid. Uh, Snood. Which is basically just Puzzle Bobble, but it was... Awesome. Snood was my jam. I regret everything! Uh... Game over. Alright, really quickly, I'm just gonna look up to see if this is an emulator issue, or if the game itself actually runs like this. 
So the only footage I can find of the game is people playing it on the Game Boy Color version rather than the Game Boy version. Uh, what's Checkmate? Oh god, what? Oh, I see how it is. It's like actual mini puzzles. Oh, well, that's cool. And that text is fun. And now time for five. Oh god, I'm panicking. Hey, so they give you an endless mode and they give you some little challenges. You know, when it comes to puzzle games on the Game Boy, that's really all you can ask for. Oh, I failed. I'm actually having to think about this one. Ah, I think I got it now. Yep, there we go. Boom. So it's a pretty solid version of Zuma. Or, alternately, Zuma is a very solid version of this. So, we see how it plays on the Game Boy, but... How's it play on the Game Boy Color? Ooh, their logo is colorful. Uh, ditto. Aw, oh, what a pretty logo it is now. How to play? Yes, we know. This all looks much nicer. And how's the game running? Uh, still kind of flashy. Okay, so from what I looked up, this is actually an emulator issue. No other version I can see of the game is flashing like this. Uh, most of the versions I can see are just running fine. So we're not going to hold it against the game. And color-wise, it looks very nice. They have a nice mix of color. They have some nice symbols. It's just... Yeah, it looks fine. I hasten to add it doesn't look fantastic or anything. They kept it simple. But when you're making a puzzle game like this, simple is the way to go. Again, I don't know which came first. This game or Zuma. Or I guess Puzzle Loop or Zuma. I'm guessing Puzzle Loop came first. But this sort of set the standard for how these games should play. Oh. If you hold B, it speeds up. And then everything gets ruined forever. Now, time to review a game that has appeared on basically every console ever, including tablets at restaurants. I've talked a lot about Zuma while playing the game, and that's because, well, the game is Zuma. But an important point is that Zuma came out five years after Puzzloop slash Ballistic did. So really, let's put Zuma out of our minds and talk about Puzzloop. And despite the limited hardware, the game was just as fun as always. It played well and had enough variety between an endless mode and a puzzle mode to give you plenty of replay value. And it looked nice and sounded good. There were some flickering issues, but those were from the emulator. And moving to the Game Boy Color version made it even better, moving it even closer to the original arcade versions that were so beloved. To be honest, not much else to really say about the game. So let's talk about lawsuits. PopCap Games released Zuma in 2004, and Mitchell Corporation, upset that their idea had been so blatantly stolen, planned to file a lawsuit against them, but it never came to fruition. Then, when EA bought PopCap in 2011 and released a new version of Zuma, Mitchell Corporation actually did go through with the lawsuit. And sadly, they lost in court, and the fees the lawsuit incurred led directly to their bankruptcy. And that explains why the game is so much more associated with Zuma than Puzzle Loop or Ballistic, because to be honest, the game was kinda stolen, and the original company basically lost everything because of it. It's kind of a sad story, I know, but hey, the game itself is pretty good, so pay some tribute to the original version of the game by giving it a try, and have some Ballistic Puzzle Loopin' fun. And also, look forward to my new show coming soon, Nuon Roulette! And that's all for another episode of Game Boy Roulette. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to follow the series as we continue to dig through the Game Boy Vault. I'm Brian J, and I'll see you next time.